Hi everyone, it's Terry in the Great Herbal Outdoors. I'm in one of my gardens right now. And though the sun is in my eyes and I'm squinting, I'm searching for a particular plant called plantain. And I'm sure it's growing right at the edge of the garden here, but I'm also searching for my herbal partner who's usually with me on these escapades looking for plants and their remedies and the medicine and food that can be made from them. Let me take a peek here if I can find this plantain and then we'll go in search of Evan. Here's a patch I was looking for. This is a small little area full of plantain leaves and other interesting plants that have uses. I'm going to pick a few of these leaves and continue my search for my little helper Evan who's usually by my side but I think he's playing some tricks on me today. Hey Evan! Evan? Are you here? Are you hiding from me? Oh my. I'm gonna have to make a, a more thorough search. He's bound to be around somewhere. I'll find him. Don't you worry. Well now I've come in the house because I haven't found him outside. Which is unusual, but Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, hi. I was just about to come looking for you. I couldn't resist these apricots. Oh, I wonder how we can do our planting video. Funny you should mention that. Look what I brought. Oh. I thought you were right behind me and suddenly you were gone. Well, sorry I didn't tell you, but I had to escape the flies. Oh, well, that's another whole story. Maybe we can talk about that while we talk about plantain. How about that? Well, we're in the kitchen now with our basket of plantain. And I'd like you to know the scientific name for this plant is called Plantago magus. And magus means major, or it has fairly large leaves. There's another variety called Plantago lanceolata. Have you ever heard of anything like lanceolata? Does that remind you of anything? Lancelot. Oh, Lancelot. What do we know about him? He is the sword. Oh, so... That's exactly right. The lance or lanceolata, lancelot, is just means that the leaf is narrower and thinner like a sword would maybe look. And we do have that variety in Minnesota. I just didn't have it in my yard that I could find. So um, I think Evan knows another common name for this plant. Do you remember what it was? It has no. ribs on it like humans. Yeah. And what do we always put? Sometimes we have a, a, a certain word at the end, like St. John's wart, fig wart. Rib wart. Rib wart. Show them why it's called rib wart, if you would. Has ribs on the back, right there. Pretty close, yeah. Has ribs on the back. And then there's little strings that hold on in the middle that are quite actually quite hard to pull. Yeah, those fibers are really pretty tough, aren't they? I wonder if they didn't make some kind of cordage out of that in the olden days, back, back when the settlers came. This is also called white man's footstep because the seeds of the plant often stick to the bottom of your foot as you're walking and um, it was brought here for a reason when the settlers came and that seed was just sticking to the foot and everywhere a white person walked we would have plantain planted just from the bottom of their foot. What we like to do with this plant, aside aside from playing with things and pulling them apart and finding those fibers and so on, pulling on them, is this plant is an excellent plant to use for anything that needs mucilage or a demulcent, something slippery, smoothing. So if you had a sore throat or you had um, an abscess tooth or... Oh, even all the way down your digestive tract. This is slippery and soothing and moistening. Um, it could even be used for skin problems like eczema or owies. But let's talk about what our favorite use is. For bug bites. <laughs> or bites of any kind. What do you do with it? You take part of the plant, or you could take the whole plant if it's a small leaf. You chew it up. How's it taste? Like a plant. <laughs> it tastes like a plant. Kind of. Is it kind of a little bit bitter? 
Not, yeah. Not too bad though, right? Yeah. And then you take the chewed up plant and you put it on a bug bite somewhere and it will pretty much stop itching right away. It does, it's remarkable. Um, any kind of bite, whether it's a spider bite, a dog bite, some kind of insect bite, this plant has properties that pull impurities or foreign bodies out of your skin. So it could be if you have a sliver or some kind of venom or poison that a bug has put in you, um, even some pus that you want to have drained, you would do much like Evan said. Now, of course, if you don't want to chew it up and make that spit poultice that herbalists like to make, if you had a kitchen nearby, you could wilt this in some hot water and then put that as a poultice, maybe with a cloth covering it and hold the heat in. But it will soothe it almost immediately. You'll be surprised how quickly it works. Um, what else do we need to talk about? How to use it. We'd like to tell you what forms you can use this plant in. So the easiest, of course, is a poultice. You can just wilt it or chew it up and put it on a, a part of your body that's very itchy or that needs something pulled out of it, whether it's pus or a sticker or something. You can infuse it in oil. So you could make a jar of plantain oil and from that oil, you can turn it into a salve by adding beeswax. You could use it as a tea. It'll moisten your whole interior. You can use it as a tincture, which we've talked about in an earlier um, program. And just a wash, just boil it in water and keep that infused water to soothe eczema or something like that. Evan's got another part of the plant to show you that's kind of interesting. That is the seed stock. And the cool part is, You've probably seen this in your garden. If you're a gardener, you're pulling these out all the time and the, the roots are very tenacious, though they're not very deep. But this part in the fall will turn brown and these will be all seeds falling off. Those seeds can be ground and used as flour. I've put them in crackers that I've made at home. But the seeds are also in the same family as the plant that makes psyllium. Psyllium is what's used in a lot of constipation remedies. So you can use these the same way. And you have another special plant or another thing to show us, don't you? What What is it? The uh, Turkish. Okay, yes, I have a, a third variety, um, seeds from Turkey. So this is Turkish plantain and it generally is three times that size, but it's been mowed so many times that it is um, kind of refusing to grow much larger at this point. Is there anything else we need to talk about with this plant? Hmm. I don't know. Have we kind of covered it? I think so. Well, then we can say goodbye. So long, goodbye from the great herbal outdoors. Evan and Terry signing off. Go find some plantain.